While we are talking about vertex attribute data, let's take another look at this enable vertex attrib array. We've been calling this function several times, and I told you way early in this playlist that I wasn't quite sure why OpenGL has this. If I'm going to have a vertex attribute at layout zero, then why do I have to enable it? Just send the data on down, let the data stream. I made an educated guess in those earlier videos that chances are we don't want to stream data that we don't necessarily need, so we could potentially turn that data off for some renders and turn it on for others. But I actually figured out why we have to enable the vertex attribute. Let me control F5 this. We'll see our two cubes render as we've done in previous videos. If I turn off this attribute, then I'm disabling attribute 0. And attribute 0 is position. And if our vertices don't have any positions, then nothing will render to the screen. Control F5. We get a blank screen. Now let me enable this again. And let me disable the color data. I'll turn that off. Remember that 1 corresponds to 1 here, which is our vertex color. If I control F5 this, what do you think will render? We get all red. We get all red. And let me show you all red. That sounds like a last name, doesn't it? Let me show you what's going on here. I can actually set the value for this vertex color, and that value will be the same for every single vertice. So let me disable that again, and I'll come in here and say GL vertex a trib, and in true fashion and true form to OpenGL, there's several ver versions of this function depending on the argument types. Remember, OpenGL is backwards compatible with C, and C doesn't have function overloading, so the way they get around that is by putting some parameter information in the function name. We have here three floats. So I need to use the three float version of this function. Open it, and the index is the attribute index. It's one. So I'll say for index one, I want three floats. And we saw red was the default value. I'll turn off all the red. Let's do blue. Oh, no, that's green. Sorry. And we'll do no blue. I'll put a parenthesis on that. And now I am setting the value for this attribute, but the value will not vary per vertex, the attribute value will be the same. It's nearly identical to doing a uniform parameter instead of this varying data, because this data no longer varies with the vertice. Instead, vertex color will be the exact same color for every single vertex. Let me control F5 this and prove to you we get green boxes now. Let's do a green mixed with blue. Control F5, and you see we get our nice greenish, bluish. You know, I actually want to see blue. Sorry to waste your time, but I want to see blue. Let's do just blue here, and we get our blue cubes. So you may be thinking, well, why would I do that? What, if I wanted a value to not vary per vertex, I'd just use a uniform, or I would do that instancing trick we saw with this matrix here, which makes this attribute uniform for the instance, but not uniform for the entire draw call. Uniforms are constant for the entire draw call, no matter how many instances we're rendering, whereas our instance data is uniform only for the instance. And in this case, where I disable the vertex data from being streamed, okay, I'm setting up my streamed pointers here. We've seen this in previous videos. Instead of streaming it, even though I have the streamed pointer set up, I said, no, do not enable that. It's turned off by default. Instead, let's have a static value for vertex color, where the vertex color will be the same. It will be blue for every single vertex color, this one corresponding to this one. Why would you ever want to do this over a uniform? I have never wanted to do this over a uniform, but let me tell you if I uh, a place where we might want to do this, and that is sometimes we want vertex color to vary, and sometimes we don't. Maybe we're rendering some cubes, and we want the cubes to be all colorful, as we saw here. I'll enable the stream data, which means this value will now be ignored, and the data will come from the stream. Maybe in some cases I want our vertex colors to be respected, and we get our nice colorful cubes. And then maybe I want the color to be solid for some renders as well. So having this attribute, this vertex attribute, set up as a varying piece of data instead of a uniform piece of data. In some cases, I could have it uniform by disabling the streamed information coming in and using this instead. And then sometimes I could have it vary, varying by enabling this and having it point to the varying data in our buffer. But anyway, I, that's baffled me forever why I've had to do this. And I finally figured out why I found it and uh, figured I'd throw it in a video.